Hi and welcome to Harmon Field in Bluffton at week number seven of high school football on WOSN. It's the Bluffton Pirates undefeated in 3-0 in the Northwest Conference, hosting 5-1 Crestview, 3-0 in Northwest Conference play as well. Hi everybody, Garrett Mansfield alongside Dar Nevergall. And Dar, great to be with you here tonight. Going to have a great matchup. Two teams fighting for that top spot in the Northwest Conference. It's homecoming for Bluffton as well. All the stakes, all the stuff that makes high school football special is present today. Oh, absolutely, including the packed parking lot out there, too, if you try to get a spot. Uh, but you know what, Gary, you're right. You're looking at two teams here that with offenses, both one and two in the, in the conference so far in offense. You know, and then you look at Bluffton, the lowest in defense as well. You know, going giving up just under five points a game so far while they're scoring over 42 points a game, so or 46 points a game. So, you know, two great teams out there. I, I don't know what to expect, either a lot of a lot of offense or defense, one of the two, you know. Absolutely. Well, let's look at the key to the game. First for visiting Crestview coming in at 5-1. and one. What do they have to do to walk out of here with a win? Well, their coach wants to push the tempo. They want to keep the, the chains moving constantly. They want to stay on schedule. Now, what he means by that is, you know, we're going to keep to our game plan, you know, and our game plan is, is to move the ball, move the ball, move the ball. So that's what they want to do. The second thing is, of course, every coach says the same. Win, win the turnover battle. Now, Crestwood comes in at minus three on, on turnover ratio. Bluffing comes in at a plus nine on turnover ratio. So that's going to be a tough one for Crestview. The other thing is create more explosive plays. You know, get big big yardage plays, not just drive the ball down the field consistently, but get some big explosive plays as well. There you have it for Crestview. Now, Dar, what about on the other end for the home Bluffton Pirates? Well, they want to win the line of scrimmage. That's a big thing. And you look out here at both these teams, there's some big boys out there on, on both sides of the ball for both of them. So they want to win the line of scrimmage. That's always key for them. Second, they want to take care of the football on offense and take the ball away on defense. Like we said, their turnover ratio is a plus nine. They want to continue that. They want to force Crestview to give the ball to them as much as they can. And the last thing is limit those big plays that Crestview wants to do. You know, got to do that on their defense. And Bluffton's done a great job of doing that all season long. Like I said, they're coming in at 4.7 you know, points per game allowed. They don't allow a lot of rushing and passing yards either. So it's going to be a very interesting game, I think. And the Pirates rolling with four consecutive shutouts. Meanwhile, Crestview has been 45-plus for the last three. There's your keys to the game. Thanks, Don, for that. We'll step aside and return for the kickoff on homecoming night from Bluffton here on WOSN. Greetings again from Bluffton. We're at Harmon Field for a huge Northwest Conference battle between the Pirates and the Knights from Crestview. Our scoreboard this evening is brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Garrett Mansfield next to Dar Nevergall tonight. The Pirates in their special military appreciation jerseys this evening in the camo, but hey, you can still see them against that uh, green plane of grass we have down below. The Knights from Crestview will be in their visiting whites this evening. We're going to learn a lot about where the Northwest Conference is going to go after this evening, Dar, because not only do you have a 3-0 matchup against these two tonight, you also have Columbus Grove and Lipsick doing battle Absolutely. down the way. Yep. And all three of them undefeated atop the, the conference entering week seven, which is pretty impressive uh, when you have an eight-team league and four of them are unbeaten. Yeah, absolutely. And Crestview's only lost this season is with a BBC team in Macomb, you know, 55 to uh, 13. But since then, they've really racked up a lot of points. And, you know, like I said, these are number one and number two offenses in the, in the Northwest Conference. So you can expect some fireworks that way. But that Bluffton defense, when you look at them, that's a tough, tough defense. And they've, you know, they're only giving up 4.7 points a game. So you know, they're going to have to shut down a very good Crestview offensive passing game, particularly, which is always the case with Crestview. They like to throw the ball a lot, you know, but they're going to have to shut that guy's down, you know, led by their quarterback over there. Right, we'll get a look at those two top-ranked units right away. Kyle Basil has it on the tee and ready to kick it away for the Pirates. Isaiah Barton. Kellen Putman back to return for Crestview. And a beautiful evening for football is underway 
And a booming kick down near the 10, and running up and grabbing it, Putman. And he's on the outside left edge. Gets to the 25 before he is wrapped up. And we'll get our first look at the Crestview offense being led by Bryson Penix. Penix leading the conference with just over 1,000 yards passing early in the year. Oh, 12 touchdowns through the first six weeks. Eight interceptions to go with that, so he is kind of a little... A little, little prone for that. Yeah, a little, yeah. when you throw that much, that's going to come in, and they're going to spread him out early. Yeah, he has our, thrown 97 times this season, so you're right. You're, he has thrown a lot of passes. Putman goes in motion. There's the snap. And the first down give goes up to Braxton Leith between the tackles and nowhere to go. Let's meet that O-line for Crestview tonight. You're going to have Garrett Yinger, Caden Wolford, Preston Crasher, Connor Sheets, and Evan Walls all up front in front of Penix and those school guys that will work in here. You have Ren Sheets spread out wide. The slot is Bo Eggleston. Along now with Leith in the slot here to the right side as the Knights still getting their second down play ready to go against the Stout Bluffton defense. Second down for the Knights in the first quarter. Back to throw, Penix with time, fires over the middle and oh. incomplete near midfield and closer to the target. Putman was the intended receiver, but the defender, Carson Cruz, was the closer man of the football there for Bluffton, third down and 10. But you gotta like that from Crestview. They came out firing right down the field, the first play from scrimmage, you know. They're the kind of team that likes to, you know, just spread the ball all over the place. Your quarterback's, you know, hitting 60% of his passes. Penix going to go outside for Ren Sheets. Got a big target on the edge, but it's out of his fingertips at the 32. We'll look at it again on that Lee's replay. Three and out for Crestview to start the night. 61 seconds have gone by, and the Pirates will get the football next. Well, Garrett, that's one of those situations where the receiver was looking downfield and you know thinking I got I got some space downfield and not really concentrating on the ball. But she's got nine catches this year for 191 yards and three touchdowns. So uh, he's gonna get his opportunities tonight for sure. Yinger's punt is in the air. He averages 34 a night as the return man Braden Jordan lets it fall, gets a bluffed in bounce and is out of bounds north of the 40 yard line. He'll be close to the 45. That's indeed where they're gonna mark it. And our first See of Garrett Bogart in the Bluffton offense coming up next. He'll be guarded by Xavier Diller in the, at center. The guards are Brody Summers, Jacob Granger, and uh, Ian Riemann and Daniel Frederitz are the tackles for Bluffton. But one of their lead workhorses, Landon Worcester, junior tailback behind Bogart in the pistol. His first place in rushing in the Northwest Conference. And he'll get the first give and not a whole lot of running room. That play knocked up. Yeah, Pennix in there on that one. Got penetration and made the stop for no gain. So both teams talk about the offensive numbers early. Defenses are showing tough, and that's kind of how things went the last couple of years. These two teams have played. Last year, Bluffton took a 17-14 win. And Crestview won the year before in a 21-14 battle. So we've had some low-scoring contests when these two get together. And there's the snap for Bogard. Pressure coming, but he has a good block. Fires in space, but incomplete along the near sideline. Third down and long on the way for Bluffton. Yeah, we talked about Penix being number one in the Northwest Conference in passing. You know, Garrett Bogard is number two in that column. You know, hitting 69% of his passes, 599 yards, nine touchdowns, and no interceptions for that young man. That zero interceptions mark probably the more important number there. Doesn't turn the ball over, and you look at Bluffton as a whole, they have only turned the ball over two times all season. And Worcester gonna get the carry here on third down and backs into the Defensive front for Crestview, and that'll force a three and out. Not a whole lot of wow. offense in these first couple of possessions. One yard, really, if that, for Bluffton on this drive, and they'll be forced to punt. 
Yeah, and Landon Wooster, you know, 90, you know, 84 carries so far this season, five, 849 yards and 14 touchdowns. But Crusty was waiting for him on that one there to come right up the middle. Dropping back to return, Hunter Jones. And the punt will come from Gabe Misa. Low snap, but he recovers, gets a line drive off, hits at the 28, rolls, and Jones will let oh. it go. And it takes a great Bluffton roll to the five. Wow. Talk about field position starting from your five-yard line. Ends up being a 50-yard net in field position after the punts. So 9-19 here in the firsts. Again, Bluffton 6-0. Crestview is 5-1. You look back through conference titles, is this is really one of the teeter-totters at this point of the year where the conference race is going to go. Bluffton's last was in 2005, and they won back-to-back -back Northwest Conference titles for Crestview. You got to go back to 2018. Had a good run. As you see, an incomplete pass from Penix to the right. Nobody out there in the flat. Well, he had to get rid of that in a hurry because Bluffton was coming. You know, They knew that he's sitting on the five-yard line. He's dropping back into the end zone to throw that ball and they were bringing guys on the edge very quickly. So he had to get rid of it in a hurry and nobody was out there to keep for him. And a sprint three. Leaf gets the misdirection, nice little counter. Off left side, rolls off a of one tackler, pushing ahead to the 10 before he's gobbled up by the Bluffton defense. We'll see it again on the Lee's replay. Good job staying home by the 50 of Brody Summers. He keep Leaf from getting to the edge. That gives Crestview a little bit of breathing room, though. It gets him out of that end zone. Third this, down. This is going to be a tough third down and seven, though, because, you know, Bluffton knows that he's probably going to throw the ball. He's got nobody in the backfield with him right now, so. Leaf in the slot to the right. And Penix will throw. A quick hitter outside. It's complete on the edge on the left. Bo Eggleston. Is tight end, and that's going to be enough for a Citizens National Bank first down for Crestview. And what a target out there in Bo Eggleson. I mean, senior, six foot six, 195 pounds. You know, it'd be nice to have a tight end like that on every team, but he's a big target out there, and he can really carry the ball after the catch. Leads the conference in receiving over 300 yards on the year. Empty backfield. They're going to sling this out. Penix to Leaf again, and hip immediately right at the line of scrimmage. Good job on the edge, sealing it up by Hayden Durf. And you can see why this Bluffton defense is so good because they really pursue down the lines, and you know they they'll they'll bend a little bit. They'll give you some some yardage, but you know they haven't broke too many times this season. It's been a while since that the defense has broken. Indeed, Dar, you got to go back to week two since they've given up points. 8.08 in this first. Panics getting everybody in line. He's going to fake the throw, try to keep it himself, but he's got three camo shirts pursuing him immediately as he got off the edge. Looked like no Brickner in there on him first and a couple other uh, Pirates up after that. Really pursued well. Now a key third down for Crestview. They were backed up against their own end to start this drive, Dar, but they've made a couple of plays. And if anything, they're able to keep the field position manageable. They have to pump this one away, but a long pass deep down the far sideline, in and out of the hands of the defensive back. That's going to be incomplete. That looked to be Quinn Eaches trying to haul that in. Yeah, nice throw down there, though, going to his left and being able to throw across his body that way and get down the field quite a ways, but just overthrew his receiver. Now it could get bluffed in some decent field position. Garrett Yinger going to pump this off for the Knights. Yinger averaging all, just under 34 yards per punt. The senior back there, also a lineman. Pulls it down, big target. A lot of size on this Crestview team. And Yinger, one of them showing off the 
Range to catch that football and boot it down the field. A good punt inside the 30, and now that's a longer field for Bluffton as they take it for the second time here this evening. The Pirates were able to muster about a half a yard of offense the last time they had it. Still looking for that rhythm as they get sent for this next possession. Last week, it was a 48-0 win at Ada for Bluffton, their fourth consecutive shutout after beating Ayersville on the road, and then Jefferson and Spencerville to start Northwest Conference play. On the flip side for Crestview, 52-6 was the final over Jefferson last week. Took down the defending conference champs, Allen East, the week before that, 51-28. Their other victory in conference play over Ada. And there's the snap to Bogart, the end around play quickly snuffed out by Crestview. That was Leith got around the corner and yeah Braxton Leith held his ground you know knew what his assignment was and he was able to put him down right there. Wusha's not a very not an easy down either. He's junior 5'11 200 pounds. Now the Pirates settling in with Diller over the ball. Snap to Bogart to give to Wooster. And he gets his way to the 30. Picks up a couple. Make about third down and six. But it just feels like one of those running games that the more opportunity, the more you're able to run it, the more the, the gears get greased up and a, a little loose. And you know, we'll see as this game goes along as well, the Pirates have rushed for over 1,667 yards this season so far. You know, so, and and most of those have come from the from the running back back there, in Wusher. So Bogart has a man in motion. It's Griffith Stackhouse. He's going to fake one way, shed a defender. Now he's still on his feet. Has to correct his helmet, and finally brought down behind the line of scrimmage. The Knights. Wow. Did not give up on the pursuit. You can give the credit to the coverage down the field and the relentless pursuit of the defensive line to get to the quarterback. And Garrett Bogart dropped for a third down sack. Punt time for Bluffton. Yeah, the boy, the Crestview did a great job on that one. And it looked like he had him dead to rights right off the bat, but he was able to escape that. Kind of pulled his helmet a little bit, and he had to readjust that, like you said, Garrett. And then... The rest of them, the Crestview Knights had an opportunity to get back there. So punt time for Bluffton again. Lisa has it in the air. Hunter Jones lets this one bounce, and he bobbled oh. it, but it was able to fall on top. And just did secure the football before pressure came from the Pirates. 5-0-2 mark of the first of a scoreless ball game and pretty good field position for Crestview to start their third possession. Yeah, much better than they had on their last possession for sure. But, you know, Mintz is, you know, he's leading the Northwest Conference and in, in punting him at 39.7 per game, per average per game, so, or per punt. So a lot of it comes on that roll he's got. He, mm -hmm. You know, he gets that good roll down the field, makes the guys make it, you know, the punt returners make a decision of what they want to do with it. There's the first down play, and an even four wide look for Crestview, which is five linemen, four wide outs. And Leith gets the handoff, little misdirection, stays on his feet, and he rumbles ahead for six or seven by far. One of the longer runs of the football game. We'll see it again on the Lee's replay. Good push off the right side. Came from Connor Sheets, it looks like clear in the way. Yeah, he, he was able to escape the first tackler who had a, looked like he was going to get him by the ankle, make that little reverse the other way and uh, pick up some good yardage. Like I said, Garrett, that's probably one of the longest runs from scrimmage we've seen so far. Barrett and Aggleston, near side to the right for Penix. So they're going to look to the sideline for a new call. There's the snap for Crestview and the pass outside caught by Barrett. Near midfield. Should get him the first down. And that indeed, a Citizens National Bank first down. Just the second of the contest for Crestview. Bluffton still in search for their first on offense. Hmm. 
This is going to be a true test for the secondary for Bluffton in this game here. Because, like we said, Crestview likes to throw the ball a lot. There's the fake to lead, and Penix on the keeper around the left side. He gets across midfield and over the 45. Good gainer on first down for the Knights. And they're going to go right back at it. Jacob Granger on the tackle. There's Parrott outside right. And a good hit. High and then low. It started with Brody Anderson. And Wooster got over there to finish him off. And right now, Crestview's content with just going to the sidelines on those passes, gaining, you know, three, four, five, six yards like that. You know, but look for Penix one of these times, just drop back and throw it deep again. Another Citizens National Bank first down. And Penix will keep it. Stiff arms at one defender, but he's not going to escape the second as he's dropped for a loss. You can look at this pursuit by the Bluffton defense going down the line. You know, they got five, six guys going down that line, making sure that he doesn't get any more yardage. Got Noah Bricker on the pursuit. Second and long for Crestview. Snap to Penix. And he quickly surveys and takes off before he Ooh. is met hard at the 35. Got a couple of yards back, but it's Bricker again. Yeah, Noah Bricker, Jr., 5'11", 175 pounds. 24 tackles coming in this game with two tackles for loss and one sack. After the collision, third and seven. Crestview needs to break inside of the 30. Panix fires deep over the middle, incomplete. Good defense out there. He was going for Eggleston, and it's one of those, saw the safety sliding over, and when you have a player in traffic like that, the experience will go a long way to see who goes into the contact, but definitely notice the safety sliding in. Wanted to avoid that contact. There was a penalty flag on the play, and it's going to be holding against Crestview. That'll back up the Knights even further, so that'll take them out of thinking about going for it on fourth down. And out to the 45. Third and 17 now for them. Final 223 of the first. It seems like a very quick first quarter as well. Yes, it has. It's zipped right by. Four wide look. And Braxton Leith in the gun with Penix. Takes the snap. Pressure coming. That was Bricker coming in and a deep throw intercepted inside the 10. That's as good as a, good as a punt for Bluffton. And it's picked off by Brody Anderson. Well, we talked about Penix, who, you know, with eight interceptions coming into this game, you know, or make that number nine now. But, you know, going deep in that corner and that Bluffton defense on the secondary is really a ball hawking defense. And they'll go right for the ball, and that's what they did on that one there. So a costly penalty leads to an additional play. And ball intercepted. And tough field position for Bluffton, but said mention as good as a punt because that would have probably been the result there. And this is probably where you may end up depending on if that punt is not returned. So Bogart to Wooster to start the new drive and he dives ahead and he gets a grill full of Connor, of Connor Sheets. Sheets indeed. <laughs> yes, sir. He was right there to plug the gap, but one of Wooster's best runs of the game early on about five yards ahead. Final two minutes to play of this quarter. Yeah, that's running into a six foot five, 230 pounder right there in Connor Sheets. He'll staple that defensive line. He'll have Ren Sheets on the outside of him. Preston Crasher on the other edge. And this will be a keeper for Garrett Bogart around the right. Gets into that second level and a penalty flag comes out as he dives ahead of the 15. See if we can pick up that infraction on the Lee's replay. See a Crestview player on the ground, but in the backfield, but flag came out from the side judge. Yeah. Might be in the direction of a 
Maybe a face mask outside. They're going to give it a hold on Bluffton and push them back half the distance. So back this far in, in their own end. That was costly of a penalty, but. No, but it puts them back on the uh, seven yard yep. line now. Again, with the end zone in their back. Bluffton still to convert a first down in this first quarter. A scoreless contest on that Web Insurance scoreboard. So Bogart grabs the snap. Pressure coming. Four Knights got through, and it's a little dump ball pass completed. Man in some space and down at the 25 yard line for a first down. Hayden Durth caught that pass underneath, made a man miss. And there's that first first down for Bluffton. That was a great play call by the coaching staff for Bluffton, too. Just you know, had him open un underneath and just dumped it right in there to him. And he had a couple good blocks ahead of him, but you know, he just outran one of the other defenders. First down brought to you by Citizens National Bank. Now Bluffton's got to capitalize on this one. They got to get a, a good drive down there and put some points on the board. From the 26. Bogart the pistol. Ahead of Wooster as Dirth goes in motion. Play action over the middle, and it's tipped near the line, and it falls incomplete. I think that was Penix yeah, at his linebacker spot. Hand, got a hand on that one. Turned a tight spiral into a flailing quail pretty quick. And it's a good thing that Penix got his hand on that one, too, because there was two guys out there for bluffing the rope on that one. 46 seconds to go in the first period. A very tight defensive game. And we really didn't know what to expect. Either the offenses were going to show up today or the defenses were. Give the Wooster on the second down. He's going to pick up two to the 30. And that play clock starts a hair after the time needed to take another snap in the corner. Quarter, we'll see if Bluffton does indeed run another play. It'll be third down, or do they want to take the quarter break to talk it over? It seems to be heading into the direction of the ladder. But you, you hit it on the head there, Dar. The defenses, you know, the offensive numbers stand out. And, you know, early in the year when you're putting up a lot of points and, you know, you don't always know what your non-conference is going to look like. Can help the numbers there. But definitely see two defenses that were well prepared and well studied through this first quarter. That'll retire the first period of play. Scoreless from Harmon Field will return for the second quarter after this. Tonight's instant replay is powered by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all of your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. First quarter in the books, and it's scoreless. Garrett Mansfield with Darn Evergold tonight. The Bluffton defense continues to put zeros on the board. We've hit on it a couple times, but they got up zero points in their last four games. That's all four games. Yeah, all four games. Well, I'll tell you what, Gary, both these both these coaching staffs know each other really well. And you know, they, yes. they plan for this one. Bogart has an open look uh -oh, oh. outside the numbers and across midfield. You have an incompletion. Look like Leaf gonna get caught with the DPI trying to cover up Dirth, who was had yeah, two defenders in the area. That'll help bluff it out. We'll get the call here in a moment. But that is indeed what it looks like. You got the Crestview coach, coach over there jumping up off his feet on that one there. Mm -hmm. It happened right in front of him. The result that fresh and downs for Bluffton thanks to Citizens National Bank. So from the 39. I'll tell you what, Gary, both both the secondaries have done a great job tonight, you know, so far. You know, just being in the right places. Now that was a pass interference on that one, but you know, being in the right places all the time. Wooster with a full head of steam around at the end to the left before he's upended by Isaiah Barton, but we have a penalty flag down. This probably will be in the direction of holding. Looks like Gabe Miza. Had his man 
wrapped up around the left side, and they get called for the holding call for, for Bluffton, so that makes it first and 20 for the Pirates. Well, penalties have been costly for both these teams so far in this game and really killing your drives and, and just kind of taking the air right out of them. Two penalties apiece early as Garrett Bogart shent a tackler and hit as he throws incomplete. Eggleston along with Aiden Adams got in the backfield. I think Adams is the one that delivered the heavy hit that Bogart's pass ended up fluttering away. Well, that's the problem that Bogart's going to have all night long because you're looking at Eggleston out there at six foot six. You're looking at Sheets and you know, Wayne Wren's Sheets out there at six foot six. I mean, you got linemen at six foot five. You know, it's kind of hard to find your receivers yeah. when you got to look over those guys there to throw it. A lot of size on this Crestview I mean, defensive just front. At, just looking at their offensive front line is yep. all over six foot four. Heavy on the right side of the line for Bluffton. Wooster gets the carry across the 35 to the 37. Third down. That was one of his more effective runs tonight. Bluffton still playing behind the sticks on third down. Now he did get a, good, a couple good blocks by this offensive line up front there on that, that particular run. But, you know, the Bluffton offensive line has got to figure out how to blow these guys off the line. And so far they haven't been able to do it. And that's going to be a tough thing to do anyhow because you've got some, some weight on that off, uh, defensive line for Crestview too. Passing situation for Bluffton. They will indeed, as Bogart has to step through some pressure, but he's gabbled up in the backfield for a sack. You had sheets and sheets. Connor and Rand back there. Put the drapes down over top of Bogarts. That'll be fourth down for Bluffton. Is that Eggleston on that on sack too? I think that young man has five sacks coming in this game, six tackles for loss already. Gabe Misa will drop back and punt. Bluffton came in, came in this game with six punts all season so far. Now all three drives will end with that play. Angling toward the sideline. And it'll take a little backspin there to the 36-37. Crestview takes over. 2-0-2 into the quarter two. Now after the turnover of the last possession for the Knights, they moved the football a little bit through the air and Bluffton has held firm. What are you looking for here to kind of set the tone of the second quarter? No, I think I think he's going to come out throwing again. And if I were him, I'd be going again, trying to go to my big tight end out there and, and Bo Eggerson. And, you know, and, and he's been successful a couple times. One one time, you know, a nice defensive play by Bluffton to break up the pass. But I would look to go for that again over the middle. Here, Penix with the fake handoff in the keeper. Around the edge, still on his feet, a penalty flag out. And across midfield, but this one could be coming back. There might have been a, some grabbing on a, on a block out here. We'll see it again on the Lee's replay. Might be a block in the back on that play yeah, right there. Okay. Like I said, penalties are killing them. I mean, both teams, you know, Crestview came in here with the most penalties in the Northwest Conference. I mean, they had, they had 46 penalties, 331 yards in penalties. That's 55 yards per game on penalties. And uh, so, that, you know, they shot themselves in the foot a few times this season already. You know, Bluffton, on the other hand, only given only has 23 penalties in the season for 18.5 yards per game. So, Crestview's got to clean that up if they want to really stay in this game all night long. They prepare a first down and a long play. Isaac Klein, the man in motion that takes the fake, but then uh, Penix keeps it. Might have got a yard back. There's Worcester on the stop again. He's all over the place there. Number two tackler entering, entering play defensively. Cruz the leader in that department. I'm not sure what the coaching staff for Crestman Crestview has seen because Penix only came into this game with 25 carries and he's carried the ball quite a bit already this tonight. 
Real testament to some of the coverage that's been back there. There's a little oh, quick hitter good. outside, yeah. Bo Eggleston. He's upended after a gain of six or seven. Good tackle out there, though. What, number 11, was it? Yeah, Braden Jordan. Third down and nine for Crestview. That will get settled in. Callan Putman goes out with Hunter Jones on that right side. Eggleston sheets. I believe Barton in here to the left side. Penix has made sure everybody's on the same page. He's still got a couple of ticks on the play clock as that's down the five. Takes the snap out of the empty backfield. Surveys this left side. Pressure coming, now he's looking to the right as he evades some pressure. Open man near the sticks and a leaping catch by Hunter Jones right at the first down marker on the sideline. Great scramble and throw and a better catch and toe tap for Jones on the other end. Long as that play holds, that'll be a Citizens National Bank first down for the Knights. Yeah, great job by Penix back area. Great coverage by Bluffton in the back, you know, on that play too to force him to go to the left left and but he was able to find a receiver over there. Citizens is building one, building businesses a relationship at a time at cnbohio.com. And you can see the relationship growing outside for Jones and Penix back-to-back -back completions across midfield and the Knights offense starting to hum a little. Yeah, they're starting to move the ball pretty consistently now. And, you know, he's, you know, Penix getting rid of the ball quickly, taking the pressure off himself in the back, back there when he drops back and, you know, forcing Bluffton to react quickly. So second down, and uh, we'll take the quick breather as they tend to a pirate down on the field. 7.46, second quarter, scoreless from Harwin Field in Bluffton. Back to Bluffton where it's scoreless. Timeouts this evening are thanks to Medscore Financial Services helping you plan your financial future Give them a call at 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Second down five for Crestview. Are the Knights starting to get some connection here through the air and really, you've said it a couple times tonight, really test the Bluffton back four. Yeah, they're, they're going to the sideline now to Hunter Jones and Jones really, you know, had eight catches coming into this game and he's Gotten a couple good ones right now. Well, fake for the shoulders for Penix going deep, but nobody back there. Going for Jones. Anderson and Avery Sprunger. The two back there for Bluffton. See that little shoulder fake. Trying to get the defense to slide out of position. And good ball for Penix. That's one thing that there is no doubt there. He can, he, he's got an arm. He can sling it. But at, on that play there, you saw Jones go down the sideline, got held up a little bit by the defender, which slowed him down. And I, he wasn't able really to complete that route the way he wanted to. And Penix was trying to lead him out there with that throw. Yeah, but Jones was just, you know, held up on it. Looks like Coach Cole Harding and Crestview will take their first timeout of the night. The Mets your financial services timeout here at Bluffton. Scoreless ball game for the Knights and the Pirates. And we'll take a timeout, return for more of this first half. Our touchdown sponsor tonight is Springfield Fireworks in Bluffton, your one-stop shop for the largest selection of fireworks and novelty items open seven days a week from nine to eight. Still looking for those first Fireworks of the night, scoreless ball game here in the second, but a third and five here for Crestview. Near midfield is Bluffton defense looking for another big stand. Yeah, it's been pretty uneventful so far. And an incomplete pass looking for Eggleston on the left end. Quinn Eaches was right there to wrap him up if he made the grab, and now it's fourth down. Maybe a decision here for Crestview, but there looks like they're going to boot it away. Yeah, those passes are good passes out there, too. I don't know if the, the receivers are just you know, concentrating on going down the field before they actually catch the ball, you know, or they feel the, hear the footsteps coming towards them or what it is. But 
know, they just have not been in, their timing's been off a little bit and nothing in a rhythm of any kind. The Inger punt is in the air, spiraling. Fair catch called for for Bluffton's Braden Jordan. Has it at the 20. That's where the Pirates will take over. I'll tell you, Garrett, this is not going to get any, you know, this game here tonight, but if you look at both of these teams' schedule for, for the next three games, I mean, you've got Crestview, you've got Columbus Grove coming up, then Spencerville, then Lipsick, and then you flip it over to Bluffton, they've got Lipsick, Allen East, and then Columbus Grove. So, you know, it's not going to get any easier after tonight. There yeah, if is you look that, at that boy, That's just a tough one right there. You know, both teams, get, you know, when you've got to play Lipsick and Columbus Grove on the end of your schedule, that's, that's tough. That is why wow, the importance of this game tonight will go a long way in that. Now, fortunately for Bluffton and Crestview, they got Columbus Grove at home. There's Wooster with a head of steam over the 30 for a Citizens National Bank first down. We'll see it again, how that thing opened up in the middle thanks to that old line. Yeah, great blocking up there, and that really got the Bluffton fans yelling, we're on the Bluffton side over here, and you can hear them. You know, that's the first explosive play that we've seen tonight. And Worcester was averaging 10 yards a carry entering play and one of his first big bursts. And I think that's the takeaway early in this game. It, one of those backs that appears to, as the game goes, he gets more touches, the better he gets. And this time, he's taken on two nights all the way to the sideline for he is bumped out for another s &B Bank, first down. Oh, he's showing his versatility there. You know, he went up the middle on that one run for 10 yards, and he goes to the outside, shows a little bit of speed on the outside, then just drops his shoulder down, just runs over the defender. Worcester with a league-high 14 touchdowns. So he hit the almost the halfway mark of the second quarter. Man in motion, the fake to Gavin Bogart, and... Worcester's going to take this one up the gut before he stopped for a short gain. Yeah, Zayden Martin in there on that stop for the Knights. And this one continues to roll on. This is the first real life we've seen from either one of these teams tonight, and you give a lot of credit to the defenses for that because they pretty much shut each other down. But you know, Bluffton's starting to feel it a little bit now. They realize that they're able to move the ball on this night defense. This is the give to Braden Jordan. His first carry of the evening. We'll take it over midfield. Actually, I take that back. That's Gavin Bogart. Yeah, Gavin Bogart, 173 yards rushing this season. Four touchdowns of his own. He's got three others through the air from twin brother Garrett. Third and four for the Pirates. You can see that first down marker right down the 45 from the pistol. Each is in motion. And this is Ooh. the give to Bogart again yeah, and Penix wow. with the hit for lots. We're gonna break right through there was able to slip past Noah Bricker. Got the hit in the backfield, and now Bluffton will punt it. Well, that's one way to shut down any momentum is just break in there and get a sack right off the bat, but, or get a drop for a loss. Well, you know, the the quarters here, Bluffton Dar, as we've, we've learned, they're tight. There are folks everywhere, all the way oh, around yeah. this field. There's no track here, which makes it even more intimate. But it is a, it has been a cage fight that through these first quarter and a half. There's the punt down the sideline and bounding oh, inside the oh, 10 man. and out of bounds. Might even be inside the five. Mimiza goes to the coffin corner. And that's where the Knights are going to be pinned up against their own end. Yeah, you mentioned earlier on Misa with a, you know, averaging almost 40 yards a punt. But there you saw the other side of him too. That little finesse there, kick it off the side, get it out of bounds, dry, you know, pin these guys back again with their end zone in their back. Now these are some of those night star where the punt game is a highlight. 
And we've seen a couple of doozies this evening to really put these offenses in tough spots. Well, the Pirates have really got to keep the Knights right here. Here's Leith almost broke away and a shoestring stop in the middle of the defense by Carson Cruz. That could have been a whole lot more if Leith breaks that one. But he got him away from that end zone. Nearly a first down here, Leith again off left tackle. And a big pile forms just inside the 20. See what he has off that side, good. Good for a first down. CNB bank first down. But a good push off the left of the line. Good methodical series here for uh, Crestview so far. Here's Leith and he goes misdirection, oh. nowhere to go. Nowhere to go on that side. Good job by Bluffton to seal that hole up really quickly. He's trying to follow a blocker on that side too, but the Bluffton defensive line pushed that blocker into his path. Now Penix will drop into the gun with four wide. Leith is in motion. He's going to get the end around and cut it oh, up. Nowhere nothing, to go again. Nothing there. That side of the line has really gotten a good push. I'm going to get Marco Iden and another in there on the stop. Yeah, that was Hayden Durth that had a hold of his legs yep. trying to pull yep. him down. Another key third down play for Crestview. They, you know, they've converted a couple of them, but this one's really crucial where they're at, sitting at right now in the 16-yard line. They really got to get this first down. Under three to go in the first half. And we're going to get a whistle and a timeout taken by Crestview with 2.40 left in the second quarter third and 11 coming up at a Metzger financial services break in the action we'll step aside and return to bluffton after this tonight's red zone sponsor is loudix jewelry family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years visit them on south shannon street in van wert or online at loudix.com Third down play for Crestview. And a scoreless first half. Back to throw, Penix near the sideline, looking for nope. Kellen Putman, and it's out of his grasp. Incomplete, we'll see it again on the Lees replay. It was near the sticks, that's where he, he wanted to throw it. Branson just not able to squeeze that in. Yeah, they're just, their timing's just a little bit off, you know, and his throws have been a little bit wide or, or a little bit high for the receivers. Another punting situation for Crestview, though. Boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> Hayden Parrott will drop to receive the punts. And Yinger off the end of the foot in a spiraling kick. will take a Crestview hop down near the 40 and inside the 40, back to the 38. Still good field position for the Pirates, but a great boot flips the field. 2.23 is all that's on the clock, and for a team that runs the football so well and blocked in, can they get a big chunk or two in these next couple plays to set themselves up? That's going to be something to look out for right away, Dar. Well, it certainly is. With the time running out on them in this one here, you can't rely on just the run now because, you know, Crestview's done a nice job of stopping that all, all first half. So. You know, they really need a, a Garrett Bogart to come up with some kind of pass to somebody, you know, to get them downfield quickly. Got Stackhouse by himself here to the near side right. Wooster in the backfield. And he's going to get the give. Puts his head down. Off contact ahead for five. Collision there with Braden Penix. But the clock continues to run at 2 11 now in, in county. You talk about the crowd here tonight because the parking lots were full, but you look at, you know, the Bluffton Everywhere. side is full. They're down there by the concession stand sitting on the grass down there. Full house at Harmon Field. 
Man in motion. It's going to be a fake and kept by go. Wooster. There he's in the open field of the 40. And he's dragged down from behind to the 30-yard line. That's what we were looking for there, Dar. An explosive play. Great blocking there up front. Look at that hole they left open for him. And then that young man, once he gets through the hole, beats the linebacker to get back into the secondary. And, you know, doesn't, doesn't turn on a lot of speed when he got back there. Just kind of, you know, smoothly you know, runs right through there. Hayden Parrott saves the Springfield Fireworks touchdown. There's the given a short gainer ahead for Worcester that time. And now timeout Bluffton, thanks to Metzger Financial Services. Minute 24 left in this first half. They're going to huddle him up. And we'll take the break as well. Scoreless from Bluffton will return after these brief messages. Welcome back to Bluffton, where tonight's extra point sponsor is Lee Kinsel on Irvin Road in Van Ort. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. Scoreless ball game between the Knights of Crestview and the Bluffton Pirates here at home on homecoming night. And a slobber docker early. Oh, Defenses nice. have just traded punches each way, but this is as deep in any, any part of the field Either offense has been able to get. Here's Bogart, open look down the sideline, over the shoulder, oh, caught in the end zone job. for the touchdown by nice Brandon pass. Jordan. And the Bluffton Pirates are on the board with the Springfield Fireworks touchdown. Great throw and catch on that play there, boy. Nice job by the receiver just to reach out over his shoulder and pull that in. A great throw down there by Garrett Bogart as well. Tenth touchdown pass of the year for Bogart. For Jordan, that's his fifth of the season through the air. Well, that's what we've been waiting for all night long, Garrett, is, you know, for Garrett Bogart to, to find an opening where he can get the ball down the field deep, and uh, he was able to do that on that play right there. Point after Kyle Basil goes up and good. That Lee Kinsel extra points makes it 7 nothing Bluffton. Row will return to, to Harmon Field shortly. The Bluffton Pirates just broke through on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard tonight, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years. Offices in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Pirates 7, Crestview 0, and Dar. Thinking during that last break how it, crucial that score is for the Pirates because guess who gets the football back when we come back from halftime? Yeah, absolutely, and I'll tell you what. When you called the timeout, you kind of thought in your mind, you know, what, what's he going to draw up on here? Because, you you know, you keep running the ball. You made a couple good runs, but then you got stuffed on a couple of them after that. Your time's running down, and you really need to get your quarterback involved to get the ball downfield. And that's what they were able to do, and the Pirates were able to put seven on the board, you know, with that really great throw and, and catch. Barton and Putman back to return the basal kick, and this one's going to boom into the end zone for a touchback. A little adrenaline flowing there, yep. I'll tell you. He's got a really good leg. So don't put Crestview off your, or out of your mind just yet because of they have plenty of time to score with the offense that they can move through the air. Now this offense averaging almost 38 points a game, so yeah, you can't, you can't take a moment off if you're the defense for Bluffton. You, know, you look at Crestview's passing near the first in the Northwest Conference with 10, 000, or 1,038 yards passing. So, and they're first with total yards of 2,397. So yeah, they've got an offense that'll move the ball. So you gotta stay on your toes. Benex rolls right, looking deep down the sideline, incomplete. That'll help them out. Only shaving a couple seconds off the clock. So we see it again on the Lees replay. Looked like Hunter Jones was the Closest target, just sealed it. But you're watching Penix as he's, as he's rolling out there and letting go of the ball. We've seen him overthrow his receivers at least three or four or five times tonight. And, you know, it looks like he's on his release. He's just releasing a little bit late, and it's starting to sail on him. So look right again. Has the completion to Jones, and he'll get out of bounds. 
They get third and short. It only took four seconds off. That was a big difference on his delivery on that one there when it came to Penix because he was able to bring it down a little bit lower when he released it, and it was a line drive right to his receiver. Five wide look for the Knights. Penix right back to the well. It's Jones, and he's out of bounds after getting the Citizens National Bank first down. I said Hunter Jones came into this. He's a senior, 6'2", 160, but he came in with only eight catches on the, on the year in his first six games. And so far tonight, he's been the primary yep. target even more than their big tight end. That would be Eggleston, who's in the slot to the left. And now Penix looking, and he has his man, but it's incomplete, dropped along the sideline by Hayden Parrott. We have a flag down in the backfield. It's going to be holding on Crestview. Again, another penalty has really killed and Crestview on this drive, too. I mean, they've been plagued by it all night long, and that's, you know, even when they get a little momentum going, those penalties really hurt them, and that's one thing that's really hurt them all season long is penalties. And I'll march the Knights back. 58 seconds left here in this second quarter as we approach halftime. First time that Bluffton defense has been on the field with the lead. But something to preserve. Well, watch out for Penix, because he can go really deep quick. They go to Leith this time, and he's drugged down by Wooster. Well, just like Bluffton on their last drive, you know, Crestview cannot afford to keep running the ball as time's running out. They may just let this run out and go into the halftime just down 7 nothing. Got to take at least one snap. Look at play clock separated by five seconds. Penix drops. Looking deep down the field along the sideline, incomplete. Up by a coach on the sideline. Now they have to take at least one more snap with the clock stopped. 20 seconds left. I don't know why he, he's hesitant to go over the middle like he did on the one play early on with Edgerton, Edgerton. But, you know, he just doesn't seem to be going to the sidelines more often. I know he wanted to stop the clock if you know with the completion, but you got to take your shot down. You know, you, you got to get your big guys, you know, crossing across the midfield and take your shot there. There's the give. For Braxton Leith, trying to get around the corner, but nowhere else to go. He spun down. Let's bring it to fourth down. And Bluffton is going to use their last timeout of the half just to stop the clock here and make Crestview march out and punt the football away. We talked about the Crestview upcoming slate. Grove, Spencerville, Lipsick. Two of the three still ahead for Bluffton around the corner. They got Lipsick next week. And if, depending on that outcome of Columbus Grove and Lipsick tonight, that could line up either two huge games in a row for the Pirates, depending on the outcome of those two games, or maybe you have another big one in week 10. Still a lot of football to be played, but every week so precious when it comes to conference titles. Well, one thing for Bluffton too. I mean, they've got Lipsick and Columbus Grove coming up, but wedged in between there is Allen East. And that, I don't care what Allen East's season looks like so far this year, you cannot overlook the Mustangs. And if you do, you're liable to drop your, your game right there. Defending champions in the conference. Not having the repeated success from a year ago tonight, or uh, this year, that punt gets off and will trickle out of bounds with five seconds on the clock. And the Pirates will have it for one more snap at least before we head off in the halftime. Now, Garrick, do you just hand off to your big running back and let him yep. eat up the last five seconds? Or you take a shot down the field and see if you can come up with another score quickly? My, my vote is to give it to your running back and let mm -hmm. him just Maybe if he breaks it through and finds a hole, you know, he could take it to the house. But the last thing you want is an interception with five seconds left. 
I'd be content right now with the way this game's going the first half just to go into yep. a seven to nothing lead. Especially knowing you got the ball after the break. So Garrett Bogart has everybody lined up for Bluffton. And there is that handoff to Landon Wooster. Trying to get outside to the right. Goes down near the marker. He'll pick up 10 more yards. Be just shy of a first down, but that'll be moot as we head for halftime. And what is a seven to nothing Bluffton lead at home tonight on homecoming for the Pirates. Watching high school football with this WSN. Welcome back to Bluffton where halftime wrapping up at Harmon Field. Pirates with a seven nothing halftime lead over the Crestview Knights. They'll get the football to start the third quarter. Garrett Mansfield next to Darn Evergold tonight. First half, Dar, certainly defensive as we see from the score there, but uh, those are the units that set the tone of this football game. Neither offensive unit, despite the numbers coming in, really got a chance to get any rhythm going early on. It was a late touchdown from 29 yards through the air from Garrett Bogart, caught by Braden Jordan. Braden Jordan, that is our only score of the football game at this point. No, absolutely. And you look at the, like we talked about the offenses, uh, you know, Garrett Bogart, just two for five in there in the first half, 48 yards in that one touchdown pass. You know, Landon Wusher coming in, he's got 13 carries for 87 yards. And I'll tell you what, he worked hard for those 87 yep. yards. He only broke out, out of there about two or three times, you know, for any kind of really gains. A lot of it's been short yardage stuff. On the flip side, you got Braxton Pennix, you know, nine for 18, 66 yards. And the Leith, the running back, nine carries for 21 yards. So, yeah, the defenses have dominated in this game. And the other tell of the tape in this game has been the punting for both teams because both punters have been able to pin the other team back in fairly bad field position on every one of their drives. And they've had to work for it all through the night. We can expect a little bit more of the same. Now, I'd, I'd be curious what the any adjustments were made in halftime by the coaches, whether they come out and throw a little bit more for your Crestview than what they did in the first half and what Bluffton will do. Hayden Parrott handles the kickoff duties, and this is a great return for Griffin Stackhouse over midfield, and tremendous field position for Bluffton. We'll see it again on the Lee's replay. Great block thrown there by Noah Bricker to keep that end of the field open, and Stackhouse was able to get around the edge, turn the Jets on, and a great little Juice and jolt for Blumpton to start the second period. Yeah, Stackhouse, just a junior, 5'10", 154 pounds. And, you know, he got around that corner and showed his speed being able to get down that sideline as quickly as he did. Now we'll see what the Pirate offense does in this first series in the second half. Man goes in motion as Gavin Bogart. He gets the handoff and he reverses field to the 40. At the 30, cuts up and is tackled from behind at the 25. Levi Grace was able to catch up to him and bring him down, but Bogart, great awareness seeing one end was closed off and found the opening the other way. Yeah, well, like Garrett, good vision by that young man just to find out. That, you know, he went around that one end, there was nothing there for him. Reversed the field around and then just thrown some speed. So you're seeing some speed from this Bluffton team right now. You know, and moving the ball really down the field quickly. Jordan is the lone man to the right as Bogart gets the give. And dimes ahead for a couple. They're knocking on the doorstep of the Laudix red zone. I don't think either team has taken a snap inside the 20 today. The only touchdown again for Bluffton was of almost 30 yards. So second down from the 22. You see Stackhouse coming in there, bringing in the play from the sideline. Split one out. And Wooster with the give. He'll plow ahead to the 16. That'll bring up third and short. But the Pirates are inside the red zone. You know, I said in the first half, you know, he, you know, he had 87 yards of really hard fought turf to get that 87 yards. A lot of his runs have been just that off tackle, you know, either the right or the left, and you know, he's fought his way through and he's busted a couple of them like that. You know, 
Gavin Bohart, Bogart, on the other hand, seems to be the guy that they want to get the ball to to get around the edge. This time in motion, Quinn Eaches. But it'll be Wooster with the keep up the middle. Should be close to a Citizens National Bank first down. And Barrels through the line. Ren Sheets on the stop. Now we're sitting in the red zone for uh, Bluffton, and it's kind of rare territory so far tonight. Yes, it has. No snaps in the first half in the red zone for either side. Great return out of the halftime break by mm. Stackhouse. And now this time the Pirates putting together a drive as they just motor on down. That one was the battle of who was able to get lower, and Zayden Martin got lower, took down the the big load of Wooster. Yeah, Martin coming in with 28 tackles this season, you know, with nine solo tackles, and there's another one for him right there. Approaching nine minutes to play in the third quarter. Pirates, a little misdirection, and a Crest who snuffed that one out. They're able to push the Pirates back for a loss. See who got there first to disrupt the play. There's a couple of those that deserve the uh, the honor for it. Yeah, Crestry wasn't fooled on that one at all. They you know plugged that hole up real quick and actually got a guy into the backfield a little bit to you know pull that runner down. Looked like Aiden Adams. Made the initial contact and the big push backward. Lining up in the middle there. So now third down and 11. Gavin Bogart is wide. Stackhouse to the slot. And this is going to go to Stackhouse oh, in the end zone and stride that little post to the middle of the field. And what a great pass. Look at this pass right over Garrett, right over the middle. You know, just right into the reach. The only place he could throw it because the Defender was all over the receiver on that one there, and he threw it right up high enough for the receiver to catch it and for a touchdown. That didn't take long for Bluffton after what that first half was. 8-19 of the third, two touchdown lead. Griffin Stackhouse, who started this whole thing on that great return. And now the Pirates will have the Lee Kinsel extra point after the Springfield touchdown. And Basil smashes <laughs> that PAT. <laughs> wow. To make it 14 to zero on that web insurance scoreboard. We'll have the kickoff when we come back. We're watching high school football on TV 44. Back at Blumpton after a second Pirates Springfield fireworks touchdown. Springfield Fireworks in Bluffton, your one-stop shop for the largest selection of fireworks and novelty items. Open seven days a week, nine to eight. 14 nothing on the Web Insurance scoreboard. Pirates, first possession of the second half, went down the field, and a big strike from a Garrett Bogart to Griffin Stackhouse, and it's a short kick on the ensuing kickoff, and a good return, Callan Putman Across the 30 and there, Crestview. We'll see if the Knights have made those offensive adjustments during the halftime break to get on the board. Well, it was just, you know, a perfect drive by Pirates. Started out by a kickoff return by Stackhouse and finished off with a touchdown catch by Stackhouse. So he was over the front end and the back end of both of those. That was his third touchdown reception of the year. So here. Braden Penix, or Bryson Penix, with the give to Bra with the give to Braxton Leaf. And not a whole lot of running room. This Bluffton defense really gets lateral in a hurry. Oh, they do, and they, you know, they quick pursuit, and they all know what their assignments are, too, because you see a couple of them, they're staying home in their positions where they were in case they switch around and you know come back the other way. But for the most part, you watch those linebackers and, and that one side of the line just, you know, pursuing down it. So here's the snap for Leith. Slings it out to Putman. Trying to get around the corner and 
nowhere to go. Great job sealing things off. Braden Jordan shedded his blocker. Was able to direct the receiver out of bounds. Well, you see Penix getting the ball out of his hands as quick as he could because Bluffton had the blitz going on that. You see the linebacker blitzing from his position. Almost got to Penix, but he was able to release it. So now three wide for Crestville on third down. They need to pick up five, get across the 40. Tight end. Eggleston to the right side of the line, and now Lethal motion out. Panix with a shoulder fake, puts his head down, and he'll be stopped short of the line to gain. Bluffton just did not bite at the fake at all and stayed in, and they're going to hold for another stop. Well, if you're the Bluffton coaching staff, you've got to be happy with the reaction that these guys have. You watch these you know, defenders for Bluffton, the reaction time is really quick. Seven minutes to go in this third quarter. And Crestview will send back Gary Yinger to punt. He's had a busy night back here as well. Braden Jordan to return for the Pirates. It's in the air. It'll hit and take a Crestview roll. Jordan's going to get out of the way and let this one settle down to the 21. It'll be down by Crestview's Isaac Klein. So now the Pirates will take over. And we hit on the first half numbers a little bit, but that Bogart was just two of five. They had 48 yards, and one of those completions was a touchdown, and that's kind of the way it goes, you know, especially after that most recent drive. They got down there with the running game, grounded pound, and opened up that passing game. And he was able to throw a bullet right over the middle to Stackhouse and made a nice catch again, you know, reaching up to pull that one in. Heavy set. Gavin Bogart gets the end around, has some space, but a sure tackle along the right end after a short pickup. That would be Leith on the stop. He's able to get there and hold on to the ball carrier. Bluffing out about five. That's a good first down. I'll take five yards on the first down. Can set up a whole lot of things for the Pirates. I think they're content right now because, you know, with a 14-0 lead, they're going to keep running the ball and chewing up yardage and chewing, chewing up time and trying to keep the offense and Penix off of the, the field as much as possible on the offensive side. There goes the snap, a handoff to Worcester, and there's a burst around the right. He'll have it up for a Citizens National Bank first down to the 35. See how he got, got it done. A little over pursuit on that right side for Crestview. And Worcester just saw it, burst right through, and off he was. Yeah, he looked like he was going to make the cut on the inside, and he saw the opening on the outside and switched over to it for another nice game for him. He'll go over the 100-yard mark tonight for sure because we're only in the third quarter. Getting close there, had over 80 at, at the halftime break. As Garrett Bogart with the snap, turns and gives it to his tailback for a pickup of two. Bluffton. Undefeated season to this point. Crestview with just one loss. They had a, a whale of a week three game against Wayne Trace. 47-9, 51-28, 52-6 have been the last three games in the Northwest Conference play. Those are Crestview's results. And Bluffton has pitched a shutout in each of their last four contests entering today. Pandora Gilboa, one of their big rivals just down the road. Only team to score multiple points, multiple scores against them, 28-21 back in week two. Another first down run for Wooster. Yeah, now, they're, now they're getting him to the outside a little bit more, letting him use his speed out there. But I've seen Pandora play. They can, they can put some points on the board too. They've got a good quarterback and good receivers on their team. That ball game was a wild finish from what I understand as well. Five minutes left in this third. 
And Bogart has it. Nope. Yeah, great penetration for the Knights. Zayden Martin got through the line and have the Pirates for a loss. Yeah, Zayden Martin with two tackles for loss coming into this game. You just add another one right there. Stepped right up from his linebacker spot. Second and 11, so now the Pirates behind the sticks. Bring Stackhouse into the game, tapping in for eaches. I'll tell you, Garrett, this has been one defensive game, and even the Crestview Knights of defense has been outstanding all night long. They've had two breakdowns that result in touchdowns, but outside of that, they've yep. been stopping uh, Bluffton's run pretty much all night long. Here's the throw for Bogart. It's complete to Braden Jordan, his second grab of the evening. And he's going to get eight before he's driven back by Hunter Jones and Hayden Parrott. But it's been that running game, Dar, that has really allowed the passing game to even be there. They have to respect, keep this defense honest. They've been so. But you hit it perfectly. It's been a couple of big shots over the top that they've been able to convert for scores. Here's third and one. And I think a lot of people in the building must be thinking 27 is going to get this football with just a yard to gain. He's going to be behind the quarterback. Garrett Bogart, there's the give. He gets contact he at the line of attack, but is able to sneak off the contact of Connor Sheets spinning for a Citizens National Bank first down. And Connor knew it. He thought he had him right there dead to rights, and he was able to spin away from him. I'll tell you the other thing in this game, too, Garrett, that's really made a difference for uh, – for Bogart back there is he's getting more time to throw. I mean, the run is setting him up, you know, good, you know, really well. But the big thing in the first half was he was running for his life a couple times back there and not really being able to get set on his passes. A couple of tight ends to the right of the line. And they're a collision at the line of scrimmage. Bryson Penix got a hat on Wooster right away, but landed, able to roll off for a gain of two. And that's one thing Crestview's going to have to get some more penetration like they had in the first half on Bogart because you can't let him sit back there like that and find his receivers, which he found on Stackhouse on that touchdown pass. He had time back there, good blocking up front for him, and he was able to throw a laser right to uh, Stackhouse. So, you know, if you're Crestview, you've got to get into the backfield a little bit more right now to, to break that up for him. Second down and eight. Snap and a loose ball picked up by Noah Bricker. Almost disaster for Bluffton, but they recover. Take a look at it again on the Lees replay. Nice bounce. Yeah, Bricker luck, lucky to have that one right in the bread basket again. That brings up third down and call it six or seven. And Bricker will head off. Got a tap on the shoulder pads and a sigh of relief. Here's a third down snap. Bogart here, pressure coming. He dumps it underneath and caught by Hayden Durr. Turns it upfield. Oh, he's he's at the sideline he's and gone. he is off to the races for a 40 yard touchdown for the Bluffton Pirates. Hayden Durr. Look at him and get it again. Four nights in the face of Garrett Bogart. That safety valve, and gone for Bluffton. What? It looks like they might have spotted him out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds, it looks like. Yes. To the 24. How about that? So instead of the Springfield Fireworks touchdown, it's a Citizens National Bank first down. A great pass by Garrett Bogart, though, because he had some tall trees coming in on him. A little misdirection, and this one it goes as a flag comes out, toted by Landon Wooster. It'll be a first down at, at the play, but let's see what the penalty is. Came from the line judge, maybe holding, and it is. It's going to come back. Final two minutes of this third quarter. Right now, just a perfect fall evening. Yeah, beautiful evening. A little warm at the start, but 
It has cooled off. Very, very pleasant night in Bluffton. Now it's going to be in the 80s next week for the first week of October. Hard to believe. <coughs> Hopefully we shake that off quickly. First down at 16 after the penalty on Bluffton. And Worcester just puts his head down. And he's rolled down by Connor Sheets in the middle. We'll see it again on the Lees replay. Almost back to the original line of scrimmage as Bluffton will have a second down at 11. Final minute 15 of the quarter. 14 to nothing. A pair of Garrett Bogart touchdown passes of 29 yards and 15 yards. One caught by Braden Jordan, the other by Griffin Stackhouse. Again, the Pirates on the move with a second and 11 at this stage. And this is only their second possession of the of the second half. Scored on their first one. Oh, Worcester nice cut back. Put a strong foot in the ground and cut it back. And here he's getting a little help. And the pile pushed over the 15. And that might fumble. be enough. But yeah, let's see how the possession turns out. Everyone on the Crestview side thinks they have it. Bluffton has only turned the football over two times all season. Officials talking it out amongst themselves. See if we can find anything on the replay. Yeah, I didn't see anything on the replay at all because you had such a pile on both sides, and, you know, pushing the ball, pushing the pile forward that you really couldn't see the runner any longer. Clearly, Crestview team away from the conversation as they try to politic their way to taking the taking the ball. Now the question is, was he down, you know, before the ball yeah. came out? That or did the they thing. call the play dead? And that's yeah. the other that's the other part. When you get a big pile like that, often the hesitation for the officials might be to play that or blow that ball dead, oh. but it is going to be Crestview football. The corner is actually over as well. And that's a big swing, Crestview's way. They're able to rip the ball away from Bluffton. That makes the turnover battle even at one apiece. Coach Richards not pleased after all of that. But that'll end the third quarter. As far as we know, they might have to put some time on. Let's see if they sort this out to add any time to the end of the period. If not, it's going to be Crestview ball at the 15. And at the close of the quarter, I think they might be putting some time back on. They're just waiting for the official. Seconds. They call for two or 20. It's kind of hard to communicate yeah. without the, without the, uh, 20. Microphones, so 20 is the call. Big, big swing of momentum for Crestview after a long drive for Bluffton. And Bryson Penix to an interception early in the first quarter. So that makes the turnovers look out, look even, out. and there is an open room to run for Crestview. Another flag down, I think. Isaac Klein on the carry. A flag or a marker? Yep, the flag. Came out that far side. That looks like this one might be coming back. Marching back against Crestview. Another time, uh, untimely penalty for uh, the Knights. Not that there's ever a timely penalty in a game, but. They seem to be getting their penalties at the wrong, definitely the wrong yep. time when they first start a drive. It's going to wipe out a positive first play after the Bluffton turnover. Just under 12 seconds to go in third. Bluffton doubled their lead on their first possession of the second half, but caught it up on a fumble. There's another head of steam from Klein, and it'll be. Able to rumble near the 20. That should do it for the third quarter. We'll have second down when we return. And it is Bluffton 14 and Crestview 0. After three quarters of a hard-fought defensive battle at Harmon Field, we'll see the final 12 begin when we return watching 
TV 44. Start of tonight's fourth quarter with our extra point sponsor, Lee Kinsel on Irving Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. First play of the fourth quarter. Press you with the ball carry. And uh, not a whole lot of room to run. They're going to lose about a yard on this second down play. Make it third down and nine. Crestview. It's getting down to the time, Dar, where possessions are going to be at a premium. So you got to be able to convert to be within striking distance in late in this football game. Oh, they've got to be in position right now to turn Penix loose a little bit more. Rolls out an incomplete, missed a wide open. He's just Eggleston. not been on tonight, I'll tell you. He had his leading target open in space, just a little out in front, but that's got to be a symptom of how much pressure Bluffton has kept up on him most of the evening. And yeah, even, if Bluff, even when Bluffton's not been able to get in the backfield on him, he, he can feel him there. I mean, you know, he knows he's got to run out of the pocket. He can't sit back here. You know, he's throwing a lot of them off his back foot or, you know, just throwing across his body. as a big target, like you said, when you got a six foot six guy and you throw it wide to him. Punt oh. is going to be deflected. And we have flags coming down. Could be for roughing the kicker. See if we got it on the... Lee's replay to get a clearer look at what happened, but two flags came out immediately. But if he re and the coach down there for Bluffton is saying, no, no, he deflected it. And they're going to put it an official points both ways. I think he meant to throw it at Bluffton. Yep. That'll keep the offense for Crestview on the field. It appears to be. A roughing call. And they'll put the Knights at the 30 yard line. A little life for the Crestview. Now they got to take advantage of it. They're not getting that many breaks tonight. When you get one, you better be able to capitalize on it. The Bryson has Isaac Klein in motion. He's going to keep it, try to get around the edge. Gets into the second level, and then he's pursued, and three camo shirts wrestle him down to the 33. Here's a little run to the outside by Penix, but just not able to, to break it away from there because you see, you know, again, Bluffton clogging up the holes on that end. Carson Cruz there on the snap. Four or make that five wide for Crestview. Panix drops, a little quick hitch out to Hunter Jones. He has it near the sticks. Does he have enough for a Citizens National Bank first down? Good strong throw on that one there. And looking at the replay, thanks to Lee's famous recipe chicken, he looked maybe a little short, but looks like he had the ball in the, the lead hand enough to pick up the first down. Five wide again for the Knights. Penix fakes, got a little bit of space, and he's able to draw the defense away from Jones again. And they're leaving him some cushion yeah, out there, Doug. Yeah, they are. You know, and they've been gone to Jones all night long and on that sideline, yep. too. And he's been able to pull in some nice passes over there. Also stops the clock with 10 and a half to play. That's what Crestview's thinking. There's a hand to Klein. Might be able to push ahead for a yard or so, but. Such a stomp defensive front for the uh, the Pirates. You see the pushback of uh, Diller, Iden, others up there. Yeah, running room has not been at a, a, at an asset tonight for uh, Crestview at all. Here's the third and three play near midfield. Penix. Going deep. He's got Jones leaping caught, caught at it. the 15 yard line. Hunter Jones, the big home run play. And the Knights are inside that Lonnox Jewelry red zone. That was a great catch by Hunter Jones. Double coverage. Wow. And a great pass, too, by Penix to put it over the both defenders. 
Anderson and Cruz were there, and here's Klein. Ahead for an, about a yard. Bluffton, four games in a row, they have not yielded a point on defense. And with that, got a player down for the Pirates. We'll take a quick timeout as well. Be back for more 933 from Harmon Field in Bluffton. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Lodix Jewelry. Your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them on South Shannon Street and Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Knights taking their first snaps of the game inside the red zone tonight. Short gainer here makes it third down and nine. Trying to take away the shutout from Bluffton and get within one score. Isaac Klein has been that feature back here on this drive, but the big play, Dar, was the big over the top throw from Bryson Penix to Hunter Jones. Yeah, great throw, you know, by Penix on that one there. You know, now they're just trying to drive it in to get in some, some decent field position again inside the red zone. But you got a big third down and 10. I don't know how many third down 10s Crestview's had tonight, but they've had a bunch. Had a number. Here comes a little shovel pass on the, the pressure. And we got a flag oh. came out at the five, but. Without that, Braxton Leith would have scooted into the end zone for the score. Take a look at that Lee's replay. Oh, play. Two defenders in the way, and you see Ren Sheets caught with his hand wrapped around the defensive back. That'll be the penalty to erase the third down touchdown. Wow, and that's a biggie too. I mean, Tuffy there. Take him all the way back to the 19. Tuffy there for the Knights to swallow. Yeah, and one of those plays where you know you didn't have to do that. I mean. Yep. Well, it's also four down territory. Either way, you slice it right now. But you don't want to, you never want to see a touchdown negated when you have zero points on the board. Right. So now they'll be forced to do it again. Leith will be in the backfield with Penix. Sheets alone to the right, or to the left. Eggleston in the slot with Putman and Jones on the right side. Here comes the weak side pressure, and Penix with a bomb oh. out the back of the end zone and incomplete. See, the protection came after the pressure. Leith was able to pick up that extra block, but Penix yeah. not Penix. able to get on line with his guy. No, he was still running for his life again on that one there, you know, bluffing, creating a lot of pressure on him. And again, kind of releasing it a little bit too fast up on the, up on top and then sailing over everybody. He's got the arm, but boy, he, and when he throws it on the line, it's a bullet. But those deep passes have really hurt him tonight. This homecoming crowd at Bluffton getting loud. They're getting on their feet. Fourth down and 14 from the 19 for Crestview. What feels like game for the Knights. Penix steps up with pressure, being chased. Still on his feet. He's gonna try to run for it. There is no shot there as that window closes very quickly. Daniel Fredericks gave the initial pressure to flush Penix out of the pocket and get him to take off. But right about here, Dar, that's where you gotta be looking to throw the football away to a target downfield. You've scrambled it up to draw the defense out. We do have a penalty flag down, and it's gonna be gonna be in sportsmanlike conduct on Crestview. That'll give Bluffton a little bit more field position after the turnover on down. What a great job by Daniel Frederick. So on that one there to, to just flush him out of the pocket, force him to run with the ball, give the other guys an opportunity to stop the play. 8.23 left in this fourth quarter. And what was a drive that started because of Bluffton fumbling the football deep in their side, of, or deep in Crestview's end of the field. And the Knights unable to capitalize and cut into the lead. So now the shutout still intact for the, the Pirates defensively. And they'll charge the offense back onto the field. And you can tell from the Bluffton fans, you know, that it's not just the win that they like want to see. They want to see another shutout. Yep. Well, this defense has played good enough tonight, Dar, for that to be the case. 
Yeah, they well deserve it tonight if they can hang on to it. Wooster. This is gonna, feels like one of those drives for Wooster to get the football half a dozen to 10 times and inflict as much punishment as he wants and also burn some clock. You, you gotta wonder there with the time, that's the time of, that, that, that's the time you wanted if you're Crestview to get some points on the board because you have plenty. You don't have to worry right. about if we're gonna get the ball back, but right now, two scores, you need a three and out to get that ball back and get back on sequence. And now the test is for the Bluffton offensive line too because they gotta open up some holes and keep the chains moving. Wooster with the carry and near the first down marker. Good stop, Aiden Adams. Got his arms around the ball carrier, wrestled him down. That's the one thing with the height that you have on this Crestview team. A lot of long arms that can yeah. grab ball carriers, not a lot of room to run. No, absolutely not. And But again, good hole opened up there by the offensive line for Bluffton. Just enough to get him the first down, and that's what they need to do. They need to just you know push a few guys off the line and just open it up for him to th run the ball through there. CNB first down for Bluffton. Wooster on the carry again, right up the gun. He'll be down at midfield. He might have another Citizens National Bank first down. Yeah, look at this spurt right through this hole. Look at the size of the hole right there. And he found it and just squirted right through it. Zayden Martin saved what could have been a lot more for the Pirates. And this is what they, the Pirates need to do. Move the chains. That's the big thing right now. Just keep moving the chains, keep beating the time up. Seven minutes as you, they look at the scoreboard. Crespi on the other hand, they, like you said, Garrett, they need a stop and they need it soon. Yep. Garrett Bogart gives this one back to Landon Wooster. He'll dive ahead for three. See it again this time. Piling humanity off to the right end. I mean, we saw a rare turnover by the Pirates on that fumble that Crestley was able to get. They really can't count on that, you know, happening yep. again. They've got to stop him from getting first downs. That's the big thing. But a 14-0 deficit with 6-19 left to go. Get their personnel in there, and they, they're being deliberate. Got a snap every, every minute to this point. This is the give to Stackhouse, and he's got oh. open room, but man, out of nowhere, another big stop for Zayden Martin. Yeah, another touchdown saving stop there for him. It's just like, he might be, might earn himself the nickname the Gopher by the time this That's one's right. all said and done. He just pops up out of nowhere. He's developing quite a low MO, isn't he? Absolutely, Martin from the middle of that defense. Third down, this is a big play on the defensive end for the Knights as Bluffton has obviously been content to keep the ball on the ground and mostly with Worcester and there that Stackhouse run the first time he didn't get the football. And we got oh. movement up front and did Crutchview come across? They did. That'll turn into a Citizens National Bank first down. So the penalty taketh and this time it giveth back for the, the Pirates. They, Third down holding penalty that had negated a touchdown on the offensive side. This one will move the chains for the Bluffton Pirates. Well, you, and you know, Crespi was just anxious to make the stop on that one there. So the guy just jumped a little bit offside. Wooster up oh, the middle, out. and look he's going to split the C and head his way inside the five. We have a penalty flag down. Could be a horse collar tackle there. Hayden Parrott was the last man between Wooster and a touchdown. Man, he just got through there in a heartbeat, I'll tell you what. That'll go for 40 yards, and a horse collar tackle indeed is the call, but bluffed another yard and a half closer to Pater. And inside the Lollix Jewelry red zone, Pirates, you know, with the five minute mark, have a chance to lock this one away. Or what it would feel like at this point in time. 
Yeah, another score, and it's pretty much, it's over right then because I don't think with the way the Bluffton defense has been playing all night long, you're not going to make up a three-score deficit with just under five minutes to play. Three backs in the backfield. Give to Wooster. Pushes the pile. Garrett Bogart thinks he's in. See what the officials say as they get up the line. This indicates that we're going to have to do this over. And look at that push oh, yeah, he's from be. the Crestview front really was able to stuff every gap. We got about three inches there. It's not much, a <laughs> couple blades of grass. And do it a, a, a one more time with four to play in the football game. Bogart with this signal. Three in the backfield once more. And Worcester has it, and he'll just push ahead, and he breaks the plane for a one-yard score. Bluffton goes up 20 to nothing on their third Springfield Fireworks touchdown of the night. And all key by your, your running back who broke off of a long runner, you know, so you reward him and let him take it in for the touchdown. Basil next to uh, line up. He'll be out of the hold of Quinn Aegis. Xavier Diller down over the ball. Snap, hold and kick deep into the night. And it's 21-0 after the Lee Kinsel Sales and Service extra points. 21-0 on the Web Insurance scoreboard. We'll be back. Welcome back to Bluffton, where tonight's timeouts have been brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 3.52 left to go in quarter four in Bluffton. Their third score of the evening, this time a one-yard run for Landon Worcester, who on that last drive clips the 1,000-yard mark for the season here in the seventh week of the year. And Kyle Basil now 42 for 43 on extra points. And suing kick Whoa. in the air, he'll boom it. This will roll inside the five. Picked up by Crestview's Isaiah Barton. And he'll be wrestled down around the 15. And that's another booming kick by Basil on that one. We've seen him on his extra point kicks, that, you know, the one he put up on the roof down there, you know. He, he, I'd like to see him try a field goal down the road one of these sure. days too, but he's, you know, he's 0 for 3 on field goal attempts, so. Got another penalty flag. This one will be against Crestview as they'll be backed up back in their own end. 3.46 to go in the football game. And a big... Big drive for Crestview. If they can get one quick, we got some things to talk about. But so far, they have really had a tall task against this Bluffton defense, who is looking for a fifth consecutive scoreless effort. Yeah, and you know that that's in their mind right now, and they're going to make it, you know, do everything they can to preserve that shutout. They're not going to have a letdown at all from their side of it. So Bryson Penix back to throw. He's the cusp of his own end zone. Has a defender right in front of him. Finds an open man. Who other than Hunter Jones making a sliding catch around the 20-yard line. Going to be a Citizens National Bank first down. We see that Lee's replay. That Jones grab. Well, you've got to get kudos to the, the Bluffton secondary because Penix has not been able to go deep down the field. He's had to settle for those sidearm sideline passes. This time he goes to Ren Sheets and pick up another Citizens National Bank first down to the 35. Got him outside the numbers. So that Lee's replay, the pump fake to the right, back to the left. First catch tonight for Sheets. Yeah, the Pirate secondary has really been blanketing the receivers for him deep down the field. So he's had to go to the sidelines. Eggleston with the catch. And 
He is able to get maybe a yard or so. Let's see that again on that Lee's replay. And yeah. Hayden Dirth right there. That didn't surprise Bluffton at all. So we hit 250 to play. And Penix with some time, waiting for somebody to get open over the middle. He's got a big one to Jones at the 40, off a tackler, still on his feet and wrestled down by Quinn Eaches. Another Citizens National Bank first down. At Lee's famous recipe chicken replay. Locations in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Give them a call for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken home style happens here. That Jones and a Penix connection, even though they've been on the road, it's felt like home cooking right there for them is pick up another seven yards. Continuing to move the chains and see that replay again. This time Penix found some open space and wrestled down one to one. Yeah, able to get into the secondary a little bit. Just over the two minutes to play. Penix, one step drop, waiting, waiting, has time. Flush down, he can run for a first down, but he's gonna still wait there in a defensive well, he's back. Not gonna get it. He's able to wrestle him down to the 30. Again, that secondary for uh, Bluffton just blanking in those receivers all over. You saw a lot of movement out there, you know, but no place to go. Braden Jordan stepped up and made the stop, so instead of heading the angle to the sideline for a run for a first down, but could have stopped the clock for good measure. Penix is a junior, one of those things that as these weeks roll on this year and then into next year, we'll certainly will see those adjustments and changes as the dive ahead for Leith goes for a Citizens National Bank first down. Well, Penix, like I said, a junior. Leaf of Southmore, you know, so, and uh, Ren Sheets also a junior, so they've got uh, low, you know, three good players coming back next year for them. Penix a deep drop, fires it long, looking for Eggleston and incomplete in the end zone. He was open too in the end zone, just a little bit out of, off, again, a little bit high for him, and that's pretty tough when you got a six foot six tight end. But that's been the MO so far tonight for uh, Penix. It's just a little bit off on the throws, a little bit high. You know, strong arm, but just, you know, not hitting, making those connections with his receivers outside of Hunter Jones. Final 109 as Leith gets the give around the left, or around the right side. Pushes to the 15 as he gets inside the Loudex Jewelry red zone. See the run there for Leith. Well, it doesn't get any easier, like we said, for uh, Crestview. They got to play next week They got against Columbus Grove, so. Bulldogs, as far as our knowledge, at this point in time, with a lead over Lipsick in a battle of unbeat Northwest Conference teams in conference play. And that's your timeout down on the field. 42 seconds to go. In the football game, we'll step out also. 21 0 Bluffton from Harmon Field. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years. Offices located in downtown Lima and in Bluffton. Pirates 21 0 with 42 seconds to go in the football game. Third down for the Knights and the Bluffton end. Pirates have held tight. Here comes some pressure as Penix drops the throw, fires over the middle, and it's Touchdown. intercepted. And will be brought back with a return, and a good one. Still on his feet, that is Gavin Bogart returning it to the 36-yard line. You know, Crestview was in the dangerous territory of being able to erase the shutout. But the Bluffton Pirates stand tall get their second interception of Penix on the day. Bogart, that is his team leading fourth pick of the season. Yeah, and then again, Penix going over the middle, you know, really no place to go over there. Threw it in traffic and, you know, 
Gavin Bogart able to pick it off and take it back for a nice you know, run back on that as well. So Bluffton soon will be able to celebrate a homecoming 21-0 victory as it is victory formation time for Garrett Bogart and the Bluffton offense. They'll snap it. Bogart takes the knee. And the Bluffton Pirates are 7-0 with a 21-0 victory over the Crestview Knights this evening on their home field. Military appreciation along with the celebration festivities and all. He had three touchdowns for Bluffton. They only needed one with the defense. Their fifth consecutive game with a zero in the opponent's score column. 21-0 the final. We'll have final thoughts when we come back. You're watching high school football, WOSN. Welcome back to Harmon Field. Sight of tonight's 21 to nothing victory for the Bluffton Pirates over the Crestview Knights to improve to 7-0 on the year, dropping Crestview to 5-2. Also hands the Knights their first conference loss and Bluffton in the driver's seat, 4-0. And the Northwest Conference touchdown passes from Garrett Bogart, uh, 29 yards to Braden Jordan, and another to Stackhouse of 15 yards, and then uh, Landon uh, Worcester finished one off in the fourth quarter with a one-yard score. Stanley Hustle Award time tonight. Check out the highlights of tonight's Stanley Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. And tonight's winner, Darn Evergall, is who? Is Landon Wosher. I mean, he just, you know, Landon really set up a lot of things for them tonight. He ran the ball well. You know, he broke off some long runs. You know, Bogart threw a couple touchdown passes. But those were set up a lot by the, the young running back for Bluffton. And he was able to, you know, just – you know, take the pressure off your quarterback by, you know, making the defense honest for Crestview. And then they rewarded him by letting him, you know, he ran everyone back and ran one for 40 yards, so they gave him the, let him run in the one-yard touchdown. So that young man deserved it tonight. He, you know, his first half, you know, he earned every yard he got in that first half, I'll tell you that. So great job by that, Ryan. So there you have it, Landon Wooster tonight's Stanley Hustle Award winner. The Bluffton Pirates host Lipsick next week. It'll be a trip to Columbus Grove next week for the Crest View Knights. Time to say some thank yous before we get out of here this evening. Thanks to our directors, Wayne Gentz, Jennifer Beck, camera operators, Derek, Hen Derek Henry, Kelsey Beimer. He is Darn Evergold. I'm Garrett Mansfield saying good night tonight from Bluffton. Thank you for watching High School Football on WOSN. <laughs>